you can use this Max for Life device to change the tempo over a certain set of time or of counts. So let me show you how this works. So if I start the transport, I'm now playing in 150 BPM and I set from tempo to 120 BPM and the two tempo to 150. So when I'm now firing, the tempo starts from 120 going to 250 BPM over two seconds. So I could set this a bit longer. Let's say um, 10 seconds. So when I now click the fire button, It takes 10 seconds to go from 120 BPM to 150 BPM, which you can see up here as well. You can set the time to um, quarter notes here as well. You can select how many quarter notes you want to have here and it gives you a time monitor how long this would be. You got a, another option, uh, a few options, more options here where you can change which tempo to use to calculate how long quarter notes are. So if you use the two tempo, which is faster in this example here, the quarter notes are shorter. And if you use the from tempo 120 BPM, they are longer, the quarter notes. Okay, you can obviously MIDI map um, this function, this fire function here as well. There are a few options here. Let's start with the most common option, which would be the MIDI map menu in Ableton Live, which you can activate up here on the right upper left, upper right corner. That's the word. Okay, so you can activate this here, then go to the fire button, select the fire button. And then, for example, I got a Korg Nano Pad 2 here. Any MIDI controller which is sending MIDI notes would work. So if I'm clicking now on a pad here, and then I can leave the MIDI map menu via Command M, for example, as well. And now if I'm hitting this pad, it will fire the whole from to in time function here. I got a Nordrum 3P here as well, which is a good example to show you that MIDI mapping to buttons is a bit limited. Limited, there is some limitation for MIDI map button mapping here in Ableton Live. So let's do this with the um, Nordrum 3P here. So I just went into the MIDI map menu, selected the button, hit on a pad, and now this pad will fire. Um, this whole function here. So because um, if I'm sending in a MIDI note, um, the button will stay usually on. So this would be the normal behavior. I'm going to show you this. So you can see I have to hit twice to deactivate this button. So if you're using the MIDI map function this way, make sure that momentary button behavior is um, selected here. So if you are automating this via a MIDI dummy clip, for example, so let's do this. So if we go into the um, envelope section here and we have the fire change function here, so we can select the fire on or off function here and to have this working and not overwriting automations here, you need to make sure that your button mode is set to toggle. Okay, there is one more way to start or to change um, this function here via MIDI mapping. You can actually send in a MIDI note directly into this track. So it's a really quick and easy process to set this up. So you do need to activate Fire Note here, press S for sync and make sure that MIDI notes are going into this track. So I can now click or press my button here from my Nano Pad 2 and it detects on which MIDI pitch a note is coming in. So I can now start this with the Korg Nano Control Pad with this button here sending a MIDI note C-2. Um, one more function here to mention which is the Start Playback button here. So if the playback is not playing and if I press here, the tempo automation is happening or the tempo function here is happening, but the transport or the playback wouldn't start. So if I have this activated and click on here, 
The playback is starting. The tempo change over time Max for Life device is part of the Tempo Control Tempo collection from abendrama.com. Please follow the links in the video description to get more info or to buy those devices.